Starting your coffee with the chopsticks of truth using the vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee at the molecular level. Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started, but first, cold brew coffee from ShopRite. Let's see how this is. Not bad. Kind of lacking on flavor. Even percolated coffee tastes better than this. This is just something you you pour it into your cup and then you microwave it for two minutes and then add what you want after that. It's okay. People like cold brew coffee because it has less acid in it and those who have a uh, tricky stomach can appreciate less acid. I hope they can appreciate less flavor because holy cow. I'm gonna have to make it another cup of coffee after this one here. Well, let's get started. Good morning, my friendly acquaintances. How, how in the world are you? Thank you for tuning in last night to the prayer broadcast. And you know that's not something I normally do. So that was really out of the ordinary for me. But I will say uh, regarding Gonzalo, Lord have mercy on him. I will never forget my conversation with Stefan Molyneux, a friend that I made several years ago. And in a conversation with him, he said that cancel culture is the precursor to murder. And we have seen that specifically in the last week, haven't we? Cancel culture literally being the precursor to murder. It's not just that they want to inconvenience you. They want to kill you. And don't make light of that. Because if you are an awakened person, they will be coming for you actively. It's not just passive discrimination. It's active. And it ends up with you being eliminated. So what do you have to do? Is it a matter of voting? Is it a matter of ballots? Elections? <laughs> we already know that elections mean nothing. Zero. Why even do it? That's my opinion. After the last one, why even do that? It's become a farce. So get creative. But Stefan was right. People thought he was crazy when he first said that. He is now vindicated. I love this line from Jonathan Goldsmith, who portrays the most interesting man in the world. He said, you'll never be old and wise if you're never young and foolish. So when I was young, I carefully strategized the ways that I could maximize my foolishness. That's pretty funny. I used to say, when an old man dies, a library burns to the ground. That's an African proverb that actually is quoted, when, whenever an elder dies, a library burns down. Think about the intellectual capital that people have in their lifetime as they get older. Think about the intellectual capital that exists in a person's brain. The guy sitting next to you in a coffee shop could be an inventor, could have created a cure for something could have created something that is so magnificent that you're using every single day. Or had a philosophy that brought peace. And when he dies, all of that information is gone unless it's recorded. Wasn't there a movie called Transcendence with Johnny Depp where they he was dying and they... I didn't see this. I was told about it, where they downloaded his mind into a computer that, and after he physically died, his mind kept going and creating transcendence. That's part of the transhuman movement that's going on. 
You'll hear me talk about that more in the future. Transhuman. I watched Coach Red Pill for years, and I am heartbroken. There needs to be hardcore lawsuits against the media outlets that doxed him. I said this last night. Doxing anybody is a crime, especially if it leads to harming that person. So until it's 100% confirmed, it's okay to feel grief. It's okay. I know he touched people in Ukraine. He touched people in Russia. And for those of you in Ukraine and Russia, have faith in the Lord. Have faith in the Lord. I'm imploring both, both sides to have faith in the Lord. You sleep to rest the body and the mind, but what do you wake for? Our mind and body gets restored while we sleep, but when we wake up, that's when you make your dreams a reality. During your waking hours, you are more than just merely a beast of the field that eats to live and lives to eat. It's important that you have a mission. It's important that you make a dent in the universe. It's important that when you are gone, that something that you taught, something that you wrote, something that you are, lives on beyond you. It's being a good steward of your life. If you just live your life 100% for yourself, you are nothing but a beast of the field that lives to eat and eats to live. So what are you creating with your life, with your relationships? What are you creating that will live beyond you? Relationships take your energy and effort, but they shouldn't take all your energy and effort. That's an encouragement for those of you that have thought of talking to me in a coaching format. Your relationship should not take all your energy and effort. It should not drain you. Sure, relationships are work. Sure, they are hard. Can you avoid, can you avoid all of that stuff? You can by not having a relationship or not being married. There are risks. There are downsides, but if that relationship is, like for instance, whenever I am on my phone, and if I'm broadcasting on my phone live, that consumes battery power. That's, like there are times where I have made a video and I am uploading the video, and then I start the daybreak show, so I'm not only recording video, but I'm uploading video, and I can almost watch my battery power just go down as I'm doing it. The power just getting sucked out of it. Video consumes a lot of your battery power versus just scrolling and surfing the web on your phone, right? Now, in your relationship, in your marriage, your marriage may consume more of your energy, effort, and power, and resources more than any other activity in your life. I'm not saying avoid it, but what I am saying is this. Minimize it. If your relationship is depleting you faster than it's replenishing you, the relationship needs to be worked on. If it happens too long, then you get beaten down and you can't act. You can't act strategically, you can't act boldly. You end up acting out of fear and always being on the defense all the time. Relationships take your energy and effort, but should not take all your energy and effort.
I said this yesterday in a lot of uh, Trump zombies attacked me. See, I'm not, afra- I'm not afraid to criticize. Constructively criticize a president. I said Trump could have gotten Julian Assange freed. He was the most powerful man in the world. I voted for Trump, and I probably will vote for Trump again. But I'm not a Trump apologist. Freedom is bigger than Donald Trump. I'm a freedom apologist. The candidate that offers more freedom, smaller government, laissez-faire, hands-off government, is the person I vote for, the person that I'm an advocate for, the person that I favor. But more than anything else, I am a lover of freedom. And the candidate that appeals to that gets my vote. If there's another candidate that is more freedom-oriented than Trump, then that's who I flip the lever for. There are die-hard Trump people that have called me names like you have no idea. And you know that I liked Donald Trump 35 years ago and read his work decades ago, before he was president. I'm not saying he's a good man. I'm saying he's an effective man. And that's what I want. Effective. That's what I want. Now, for the Trump fans that don't think, let me put it this way. I have never seen any of the trust the plan things ever come true. I'm still waiting. I'll believe it when I see it. So don't be hating on me. Trump fans. That's how everybody should live. Believe it when you see it. I'm not holding my breath because time tells all. But he's going to come back and the military's in control and blah, 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 blah. I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when I see it. You want to hate me for saying I'll believe it when I see it? Go for it. If, if the worst that I can be accused of is saying I'll believe it when I see it, I'll gladly take that trophy. Trust yourself. You make a plan, not trust the plan. Trust yourself. Trusting anything, a plan, or to get rescued, it just reminds me, a lot of the pro-Trump people, and I'm pro-Trump, I should say the ultra-pro-Trump people, remind me, of the rapturists who think that they're going to get rescued. Jesus said we're going to suffer. Okay, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I don't believe Donald Trump is going to rescue you. I'll believe it when I see it. And to get raptured as a Christian Getting rap- Believing in the rapture is not your personal Lord and Savior. Hello? The rapture is not your personal Lord and Savior. Your personal Lord and Savior. First of all, I want to give thanks to my personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the glorious rapture, which will save me. You're saved by faith through grace, not through a rapture, or belief in a certain theology called the rapture. It's called escape theology, and boy, has it, it kind of bled into our politics, didn't it? You know who I stand with? Myself, my country, not the politics of my country. I don't like the politics of my country at all. I love America, but I hate its politicians, I really do. I can do without all of them, to be honest with you. Maybe it's time for a reset, a reboot, might come sooner than we think. For those that are in sales, whether it be selling yourself, a product, or a service, people buy you. People buy you before they buy your product or service or your ebook or your video or your course or whatever you're selling. 
people buy you. You sell yourself first. If you go somewhere to buy a new truck, let's say you're going to buy a new Toyota Tacoma, and you don't like the sales guy, just a complete jerk off, you will go somewhere else. It's not that you don't like the car, it's just that he represents that dealership, doesn't he? He has to sell himself to you first before he sells the truck. Sometimes salespeople are just something we have to tolerate before we end up purchasing a vehicle that we want. I don't give money to jerks. I don't reward bad behavior. So why would anyone want to buy anything from you? Why would anyone want to attend any of your events, your conferences, your seminars, your workshops, if they don't like you? If you are not likable, you're always going to be in financial trouble. Always. Because being edgy and controversial and mouthy and arrogant does not sell. Being knowledgeable, humble, efficient, effective, and being a great communicator is what sells. Nobody wants to give money to anybody grandstanding. Christ even said, the greatest among you shall be your servant. I was reading about Joe Girard, the world's greatest car salesman, who would literally stop by people's jobs and say, hey, how's that car doing that I sold you last month? Everything good? Any issues? Just give me a call. Service after the sale. He was the most likable man on the car lot. Does anyone know how many cars he would sell per month? Somebody do a little research and let me know down below. How many cars did Joe Girard sell per month? And I'll share that in the next Daybreak show. The man was an absolute legend, and it's not by accident. You've heard me say in the past, stomach in, chest out, shoulders back, head held high, walk 25% faster. Your posture and your gait, how you walk, affects everything you do. Your work, your sales, your love life. How you enter a room, how you execute, even moving from one office to another. How your body looks when you press record. Your posture and your gait affect everything you do. So at all costs, fix your posture, fix your gait. I'll never stop ragging on you about that. Stomach in, chest out, shoulders back, head held high, walk 25% faster. Automatic words like, same shit, different day. Oh, same old, same old. You know, like when you say to somebody, how you doing today? And they go, oh, same old, same old. Or, you know, I'm one step ahead of the reaper. Or how about this one? When you say, how you doing? And they go, I'm doing. It's all negative. If it's not positive, it's negative. There's very few neutral word, words and phrases that you're exposed to. Remember that. There are several kinds of coaches and consultants on a scale of 1 to 10. The guy that just listens to you, he's a 1. The guy that is tough love, almost berating you, not really putting you down, but almost berating you, is a 10. On that scale, where do you respond the most? Do you respond to the guy that just listens to you? Or do you respond to the tough love guy? For instance, the guy that I work with is a 10. He gives me an assignment. He asked me when I would complete it. I said, by October 1st. Now keep in mind, this was in July last year. He replied, you have three weeks or I can't be your coach anymore. And I was like speechless. Keep in mind, I paid this guy. The pressure and tough love worked. The project was done in two weeks. I didn't pay him to understand me, to be nice to me, or to coddle me. 
The hard deadline and accountability was the key. And here's a note. That project was one of my most profitable projects since I've been self-employed. When he used tough love and said, you can't work with me anymore if you don't complete this. He put just enough pressure on me to make me move. Think about that. Second attempts are almost always easier. Most first attempts at anything will fail. It's like a boxer who loses his first fight and then decides to never go back in the ring. Never base anything on first experiences. Showing up is half the battle. Show up a second time. For instance, when it comes to divorce, people say, oh my God, I went through a horrible divorce. Why would I get married again? Because you're getting, if you choose to get married, if you do, and I'm not pushing you to get married at all. That's an individual thing. But if you do choose to get married a second time, know this, that if your reasons for getting married again are the same as the first time you got married, you're doomed for failure. That's a recipe for failure. When you switch the reasons, motivations, when you give yourself a reality check about life, money, education, the opposite sex, you will succeed. But if you stay in the fog that you were in the first time and you get married for love, you're going to have problems. And don't make me say, I told you so. If you were literally dying of thirst, an ebook, a simple ebook, telling you where to find water would be worth $10,000, wouldn't it? You've heard that information is power. I say that information is life in some cases. Invest in yourself. You will never, ever waste money when you invest in yourself. Most things that you buy, such as electronics and gadgets and stuff, decrease about 20% a year. I'm, I actually think that's now up to about 30 to 50% a year. So whatever you purchase doesn't take five years to become worthless. Now the ROI has I think been shortened to two years. You get about two years out of everything that you purchase. Then it's worth nothing. After two years, maybe three years, let's say you want to resell something that you purchased. Let's say you bought a flat screen TV and they're all flat screen now. See, I, I just caught myself saying flat screen TV. It's almost like Color TV and black and white TV. They're all color now and they're all flat screens. So I should just say TV. But let's say you buy a TV for $500. Traditionally, electronics go down 20% a year. So literally in five years, it's worth nothing. Now, I think because of the way, the speed in which technology is moving, a TV that you bought two years ago is now obsolete. And how much can you get for a $500 TV now that you bought two years ago? You're lucky if you can get a hundred bucks for it. But think about you. When you invest in you, when you spend money on you, your value goes up. Stuff goes down. You go up in value. This is why you need to invest in yourself. Some people say, I want to have coaching by you, but I can't afford it. Okay, well then go back and watch all my videos. I, ha I literally have a playlist that says virtual life coaching. Watch every single one of those videos and it will get you out of the hole. You'll make more money. You'll have better relationships. You could even start a business and succeed if you watch all of those videos. Just go on a binge and watch all my virtual life coaching videos. Or you can email me and say, 
I want to engage in coaching and consulting with you. But know that I'm a 10 in the sense that I'm a tough love kind of guy. I'm not just going to sit back and listen to you. You can go to some psychiatrist for that. He will give you some weird explanation. Talk to you about your dreams and symbolism. I want you to get up, get off your ass and move and do something with your body, with your brain, with your wallet. But if you go back to all my virtual life coaching videos, you will get better. You will improve. Even on the Daybreak Show, there are little gems of wisdom that if you apply them, your life will improve. Dreaming and masterminding without execution might be temporarily fulfilling, but results are the only thing that give you the feedback that you need. You need to have execution. You literally need execution in your life. Act on your ideas. If they fail, that's great feedback. Failure is absolutely necessary. He was a breakfast cook at Denny's, we're talking about three years ago. Now I can't keep up with his success. The change I've seen in his life is truly inspiring. But there was a point where he said, I've had enough. Last year, his wife was able to quit her job as well and be a full-time mom and housewife. It's amazing what one can do when they get to the point where they say, I've had it. I'm done. I'm done here. And that's what happened to Jeff. He was done. His wife is able to quit her job. They can go on vacation. He works from home. They're saving money, doing better than they ever have. And three years ago, he was a breakfast cook at Denny's. What's your excuse? And this is just a reminder that everything that you hear on television, everything, even for you conservative ink people, Conservative Incorporated. I'm a conservative. I don't even know what that word means anymore. I'm a conservative. What the hell does that mean? Okay. Not one TV station, not one news outlet that you are probably watching is telling the truth. It's the exact fucking opposite. Not even one is telling the truth. But you thought you would turn on the TV and catch up on the news, right? Catch up on the lies and the propaganda for the day. And with that, finish your coffee and I'll see you on the next Daybreak Show. Your home of sanity, clarity, and reason in an insane world. Thank <laughs> you.